And the first of the Magus cast themselves deep in the Fade in search of answers and power. Always power. They found the Forbidden Ones. Zebenkek, Imshel, Gexken the Unbound, and the Formless One. Many conversations were had and much of the fabric of the world revealed. And thus, the magic of blood was born. Hi guys, my name is Lisa, and in this video I will show you how to find the Forbidden Ones in each of the Dragon Age games. The Forbidden Ones, not to be confused with the Forgotten Ones, are four very powerful and ancient demons. Some scholars believe that they were the ones who taught the magisters of old how to use blood magic. So yeah, four very powerful demons, of which we have met three. Gexcan in Dragon Age Origins, Zebenkek in Dragon Age 2, and Imshel in Dragon Age Inquisition. Imshel also appears in the novel The Masked Empire, but I'll get back to that in a bit. The one we haven't met is the Formless One. Not much is known about the Formless One, but seeing as we've already met the other three in the previous games, I think it'll be likely we'll see the Formless One in Dragon Age 4. And also, there is a theory out there that says the Formless One could be the powerful demon the Venatori tried to release in a De Winter Night story, The Streets of Minrathus. And yeah, I think that could be a possibility. Imshel was introduced through a novel, so maybe they're going to do the same thing with the Formless One. What do you think though? Do you have any theories regarding the Formless One? If you do, make sure to leave a comment and let me know. Now without further ado, let's talk about Gex Gang. So we meet Gexcan at the end of the questline called Unbound. This quest is obtained when you pick up one of the notes written by the adventurers who were also looking for him. And the quest requires you to collect all three of them. The order in which you collect them doesn't matter though. The notes can be found in the following locations. In the lower ruins of the Brazilian forest. On the left side of the room with all the fire traps, you can find a pile of bones. Looting the pile of bones will give you a journal. This is one of the notes you need. Another one can be found during or after the Temple of Sacred Ashes quest. A letter can be looted off a dead adventurer in the first hallway on the left after entering the ruined temple. And you can get one in the Tapster's Tavern in the Commons of Orzammar. Look for the nervous adventurer. If you talk to him, he will give you a set of notes. Get away! You'll change like the rest! Monsters hidden in all my friends! They follow you. Once you are in the story, they possess your friends and follow. See? I found copies. All from the same pen and older than the ones in song. Dormant my ass! Take them! I want out! I won't disappear chasing a lie! I won't! After collecting all three items, the quest will tell you to go to the dirty back alley in Denerim. Once there, you can interact with a door to a quaint hovel. The door is locked, and it'll only unlock if you say you are here to discuss the stories of Gex Gang. After entering, there will be some dialogue, but no matter what option you pick, at the end of the conversation, Gex Gang will reveal himself. Eyes are on you from a very high vantage, Grey Warden. I cannot hide in your wake, but I will not be a footnote. Witness Gex King! Now, this fight is quite difficult. Gex Can is a level 20 elite boss that switches between a revenant form and an arcane horror form, so it's probably best to save before interacting with the door. I don't really have any tips for the fight itself other than make boss dead and keep your HP above zero. <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm not the best when it comes to tactics. I usually just um, YOLO it, I guess. If you do want to know more about this fight before doing it yourself, I'll put a link to a strategy guide in the description below. Fun facts about Gexgang. Gexgang is a reference to Kangax, a demilit from Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of On. Like Gexgang, Kangax is also a very challenging hidden boss. Gexgang sometimes even outranks the High Dragon under most powerful foe slain in heroic accomplishments under character record. Next up is Zebenkek. 
Zebenkek is located in the Forgotten Lair in Darktown, and can be encountered if you do the Forbidden Knowledge quest. This quest can be obtained in Act 2, either by finding one of the evil tomes scattered around the world, or by receiving a letter from Iduna if you decided to spare her life during the quest Enemies Among Us in Act 1. This quest requires you to find all five of the evil tomes, but reading or taking any of the tomes will prevent the quest from completing, so make sure to destroy every single one of them. Destroying them does give you rivalry points with Meryl if she's in your party, but it also gives you more XP. Oh, and destroying the tome will also spawn a demon that you'll then have to fight, but they're usually not that hard to defeat. The evil tomes can be found in the following locations. In a chantry, on a table near the top of the left stairs. In Viscount's Keep, on a bench near the throne. In the abandoned Thaik, of which the entrance is shown as a recently opened passage, and is near Sondermount's western exit of the world map. The tome is found in the main room of the Thaik, along with the Nexus Column's wares. In a rotting cave, of which the entrance is found at the far eastern end of the bone pit. And in a dank cave, of which the entrance is found in the north central area of the wounded coast. Keep in mind though, if Iduna did not give you this quest, then the rotting cave and the dank cave locations will not be accessible until another tome is read, taken or destroyed. Otherwise, the order in which you find the tomes doesn't matter, and once you enter an area where one of the tomes is located, it'll be marked on your map. Fun fact for the tome in the Chantry. If Sebastian is not in your party when the fight starts, you can lure the enemies to him and he will join the fight anyway. Same goes for Aveline and the Viscount's Keep. Now that we've destroyed all the evil tomes, we can go find the Fell Grimoire in the Forgotten Lair, which, as I mentioned earlier, is located in Darktown. It's near the northwest entrance, next to a barrel, and it's labeled as Evil Pit, and it will not be unlocked until all evil tomes have been destroyed. By the way, make sure you have a rogue with you when entering the Forgotten Lair. There's a locked door, so you won't be able to proceed if you don't have anyone that can pick locks. Also, watch out for traps. After fighting your way through some enemies and hopefully avoiding the traps, you'll find a Fel Grimoire. With the Fel Grimoire, you have a few options. You can either read it and accept the book's deal. This will give you some friendship points with Meryl, Tome of the Mortal Vessel, which gives you two attribute points, and Book of the Forbidden Lore, which is a junk item that you can sell for some silver. You can read the book and then take it, which gives you friendship points with Meryl and the junk item from before. You can just take the book without reading it, which just gives you the junk item, no further approval or anything. Nor you can destroy it, which gives you 10 rivalry points with Meryl. No matter what you do, after interacting with the Fel Grimoire, Zebenkek will spawn. Once again, I just YOLO this fight, so I personally can't really give you any tips other than I did this fight as a mage myself, with Fenris and Varric, and Anders as my healer. Though this fight seemingly isn't as hard or complicated as Gex can. I will of course put a link to the strategy guide in the description below. Finding and killing Zebenkek will give you the Exorcist achievement. Fun facts about Zebenkek. Taroni refers to Zebenkek as male in her book, but the ancient elves refer to her as female, as seen in the codex entry Virdathara, Exile of the Forbidden Ones. And on top of that, she appears as a desire demon. So maybe Taroni didn't study well enough, or this is just an oversight by the devs? Or perhaps it was intentional. Unlike Gexcan and Imshal, Zebenkek does not shapeshift during your confrontation with her. Gexcan and Imshal both show their ability to take on the appearance of humans and other demons, but Zebenkek stays a desire demon throughout the whole fight. Imshal. Minor spoilers for the Masked Empire. As I mentioned earlier, we meet Imshel in Dragon Age Inquisition, but he also appears in the Masked Empire, where he is summoned by the Keeper of a Dalish clan so that he could unlock the secrets of the Illuvians for them. The Keeper was not willing to pay the price, however, and he imprisons Imshel in a circle outside the camp. Dealing with demons usually doesn't end well, so, of course, shit goes wrong. And well, I don't want to spoil anything else, so let's just say it's not pretty. 
I would really recommend you read this novel for yourself though, as it gives a lot of insight into characters like Imchel, Michel de Chavin, Empress Celine, Briala and Gaspard. It might even change your mind on who you pick as a ruler in Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts. And it's plot ties into Trespasser and parts of it may even be relevant for Dragon Age 4. But I won't spoil anything. Um, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. After the events of the Masked Empire, Imshell eventually ends up in a Priest de Lyon, where he is currently working with the Red Templars. You will encounter him if you do the quest Capturing Suladin Keep, or you can learn of him earlier if you talk to Michel de Chavin. Michel will be just outside of Sarnia, and when you speak to him he will tell you that he's hunting a demon called Imshell. Ahem. Choice spirit. Uh, right, yeah. Michel will tell you that Imshell has settled in Suladin Keep, and he will ask if the Inquisition can assist him in hunting the demon down. Um, sorry, I mean, choice spirit. As I mentioned earlier, you can encounter Imshell without speaking to Michel. But killing him without talking to Michel first will make you unable to recruit Michel as an agent, so keep that in mind. Upon arriving at Suladin Keep, Michel will say that Imshell now knows we're here, and he has sent a pack of shades to attack Sarnia and that it's now up to us to defeat Imshell. You'll have to fight your way through a bunch of Red Templars and a couple of Red Lyrium Giants. And I'm probably not the best example, but those Red Lyrium Giants kick my ass every time, so I would recommend preparing properly before entering Suladin Keep. After fighting your way through the keep, you'll come face to face with Imshell. Imshell, of course, being the demon that he is, We'll try to make a deal with you. He'll tell you that you don't have to fight, and instead he can offer you riches, power or virgins. You can refuse the offer and kill him, or you can accept the deal. Choosing riches will give you one sapphire, one pearl, one diamond and one emerald. Choosing power will give you three pure spirit essence, a shield called March of the Everlasting, and if you have Trespasser, you'll also get an amulet of renewal. If you choose virgins, Imshel will admit that he doesn't actually have them. Instead, he offers to give you a superb corrupting rune. I'd like to be showered with virgins. I should really stop offering virgins. Everyone always chooses them and I can never find any. Oh wait, there's one. I probably don't want him. How about a rune of legend? Inscribed by the gods, radiating forgotten magic, blah blah blah. From here, you can either accept the rune, choose power or riches instead, or decide to kill him anyway. No, you die, demon. Alpha, choice, spirit. If you won't be smart, be afraid. If you do choose to accept Imshel's offer, keep in mind that he will kill Michelle, preventing you from recruiting him as an agent for the Inquisition. Killing Imshel will give you the same rewards as choosing the power option would. The fight itself is pretty straightforward. Imshel will take on the form of a fear demon and spawn some adds. As you deplete his HP, he will shift into the form of a rage demon. Depleting his health further will make him shift into a pride demon. His tactics and abilities are the same as whichever demonic form he is currently in. Fun fact about Imshael As Imshael turned into a pride demon, he calls out to Gexcan and Zemekek to give him strength. Unlucky for him though, we killed both of them. They are really dead, right? Right? And that's how you find the Forbidden Ones. Well, three of them anyway. If we ever do meet the Formless One, I'll make sure to make a video on that as well. Anyway, what do you think of the Forbidden Ones? Did you kill each of them? Did you make a deal with Imshell? Leave a comment and let me know. Bye for now though, I hope to see you on the next one.